Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and wondering if I'm late or really early doing this video. Videos explaining the metaverse exploded last year with everyone jumping on the bandwagon for stocks trading at insane valuations. Stocks like Roblox, at one point trading for $126 a share, a company valued at $76 billion, despite booking sales of just $770 million a year. Well, we saw how that turned out, and now thanks to Facebook, uh, Meta, the metaverse has become the punchline to a joke rather than an opportunity. But is there any doubt we are heading towards that Web 3.0 experience and the kind of augmented reality experience in the metaverse? In our games, on social media, and in the movies, we want that kind of immersive experience. So where just last year I was saying that you should avoid these ridiculously valued stocks like the plague, now I can't help but think back to 2000. And just like the crashing of the dot-com bubble had people saying that the internet was dead, only to see it change our lives in the years to come, I can say without a doubt that the metaverse pessimists will realize that those with the last laugh are the ones positioning for that same kind of growth right now. And the Disruptor app, a platform for investing in private tech companies, is offering an exclusive deal for, for one of the leaders in that metaverse development. Now, while Zuckerberg and Facebook are still trying to figure out how to give people legs, there are other companies that will benefit from that trend. For that, we need to explore the layers of the metaverse and which companies are leading in each. First, understand the metaverse is built on Web 3.0, so you're going to hear those two terms together a lot. Web 1.0 was the internet of the 90s and the early 2000s, basically just a one-way transfer of information with very little sharing or interaction one way or the other. Web 2.0 then was that social media revolution where you could interact with others and engage with a lot of the information online. But the problem is that Web 2.0 was built on the old system of corporate ownership. Giant tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon built it and owned the tools that people need to interact on the web. Web 3.0 then is about decentralization, where nobody owns those tools that you use to interact online. Here you become the exclusive owner of your digital self. Now the metaverse is much more than just virtual reality or the clunky world Facebook is trying to build. It's the visual representation of that idea, that is Web 3.0. I'll share some market estimates for the opportunity around the metaverse next, but Think about this, that market value of just the top four social media platforms, that's Facebook along with its WhatsApp and Instagram apps, uh, YouTube parent Google, WeChat, and TikTok alone are worth $3 trillion at the beginning of this year. That's just four companies and a fraction of the Web 2.0 universe. Uh, the metaverse and the companies that are going to benefit most from it will be multiple times larger than this because it's going to integrate so many more facets of our reality than just that social media and Web 2.0. Our precedence research for its part estimates 44% annual growth in the metaverse revenue to $1.3 trillion just by the close of this decade. Now that's up from just $75 billion this year, and I think even this growth could be underestimated. I'll show you later how the metaverse is going to come to integrate so much of our reality from gaming to e-commerce, entertainment and music. This is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market over the next decade. But really understanding the metaverse opportunity and the deal I'm watching on Disruptor means understanding what it is and the companies involved each step of the way. For this, entrepreneur John Radiff has outlined the seven layers of the metaverse, explaining the value chain and the technologies behind it. As I explain each level, we'll work through the which companies are involved. And once we know that, we can find the best investments by which companies have the exposure to the most levels. And this first layer of the metaverse is experiential, and it goes way beyond the 3D spaces of Fortnite or, or what most of us think of the metaverse. For example, how many times have you searched for things to do on the weekend around you? How many times have you wanted to go to a concert, but the only ticket you could afford was in the nosebleed row XX57 behind a column? The metaverse is going to be a dematerialization of physical space, distance, and objects. It removes the limits that we have around these. In the metaverse, you have a world of things to do because you can instantly be anywhere in the world. In the metaverse, every seat is a front row. For example, Coachella's YouTube stream this year was insane, with melting flowers and giant cockatoos appearing above the crowd. Organizers used Epic Games' Unreal Engine, the world's most advanced real-time 3D creation tool, to create a psychedelic visuals that looked totally real. Of course, this also means that those traditional industries like travel, education, and live entertainment will be totally reshaped. No longer will there be a scarcity of space or limitations by distance. Players in the space include Epic Games, not just for its Unreal Engine, but also the hit game Fortnite. 
Uh, also involved is Meta, Roblox, and Netflix. The next layer, according to Radoff, is discovery, the level at which people actively discover new projects, experiences, and feedback. This is the push and pull that introduces you to new experiences. Uh, most discovery systems are you just actively searching for something like, like on Google or online. The other side of this is that marketing where companies are actively pushing messages to you to, to help you discover their products. So imagine walking through a store and instead of seeing a bunch of advertisements, there were people that you knew and celebrities walking all around, people you could talk to and then get their input on what they use and why they like it. Imagine if Google were more like sitting around the living room with your friends. You'd be talking about something that you're looking for, your friends would share their experience and help you decide. It's like Google, Yelp, and Facebook all had a baby. That is what the metaverse will be like. What would your clothes look like in the metaverse? Timberland teamed up with Epic Games to create a one-of-a-kind design experience that blends the physical and virtual worlds. Part of its construct line, it brought artists, tech experts, and the fashion industry together all in one. Some of the companies already participating in this layer include Epic Games with its store and the Google Play Store. This next layer, the creator economy, contains the tools and technology used to create an experience and make a living in the metaverse. Right now, you can launch an e-commerce store in minutes on Shopify, but that Web 2.0 still isn't the easiest place to make money. You still need to take that entrepreneurial risk, and far more people fail than succeed. Web 3.0, though, will make it possible to do almost any job from home. How does a 30-second commute sound? Rapper Travis Scott made about $1 million a show on his four-month, 56-stop Astroworld tour back in 2019, but the musician earned $20 million in merchandise sales alone during his nine-minute digital concert on Epic Games' Fortnite platform, and that doesn't include the revenue he's made from over 196 million views on the replay. In this layer, you've got traditional Web 2.0 companies like Shopify and Adobe, along with Web 3.0 entrants like Epic Games, Roblox, and Unity Software. Spatial computing, the fourth layer of the metaverse, is all about erasing those barriers between the physical and the virtual worlds. This includes 3D engines for animation and graphics, geospatial mapping to interpret how we visualize this whole new world, along with voice and gesture recognition. It's in this layer that all distance barriers evaporate with an experience around the world as easily as walking down the street. You can visit the Opus in Dubai or the Eiffel Tower as easily as you visit your backyard. You work with coworkers in Dublin as if they were in the cubicle next to you. The Unreal Engine by Epic Games and Unity Software are really leading at this level. Next with the metaverse, we have the concept of decentralization. While Ready Player One and its futuristic metaverse were pretty cool, it was still owned by a centralized authority. Now, I'm not talking about the bad guy, but, but the company behind the games, that gregarious games, owned the Oasis. In a truly decentralized metaverse, it would be much like real life is now. You can walk down public streets that really nobody owns. And stores and some property would still be privately owned, but reality itself, the world around you, would be decentralized. You would own your own interactions, your virtual self. Examples of companies in the space now are those blockchain projects like Polygon, Ethereum, and OpenSea. The human interface layer is actually much further along in development than people realize. This is the technology that's bringing the computer closer to our bodies. The virtual reality goggles, smart glasses, and even suits that enable you to feel that virtual world. Facebook is leading here with its Oculus Quest device, which actually provides a really deep experience for a few games. In a few years, though, we're going to remember this as the mobile brick phone of its time, as that technology becomes available for smart glasses that, that do everything from smartphone functions to AR and VR worlds. And companies leading in this human interface level include Meta, Apple, and Microsoft. Now, the final layer here, before I reveal the company with the exposure to so many of these metaverse opportunities, infrastructure includes the hardware to make all of this work. And this is the back end of the metaverse that's going to keep everything running together. Things like networks, Wi-Fi on 5G, and even 6G speeds, cloud computing, and advanced graphic processors. In this layer, you're going to find the tech giants like Amazon, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. Of all the companies already participating in the metaverse projects and the development, one is exposed to nearly every level. Epic Games is much more than just a game developer, and what we've seen from that company's Unreal Engine software is allowing so many companies and industries to embrace the metaverse. For example, if you watched Game of Thrones or The Mandalorian, or played some of the MCU-based games, you've seen how lifelike virtual reality has become. 
Both HBO and Disney are using the Unreal Engine to bring fantasy to life. Both Porsche and Volvo are partnering with Epic Games to test real-world scenarios to reduce accidents, from using the human-machine interface and testing self-driving systems to testing braking, onboard cameras, and display graphics. For its part, the company's hit game Fortnite has more registered users than Netflix, with over 350 million users. Between the Epic Store, games, and its Unreal Engine, the company booked $6 billion in sales last year, according to estimates by PitchBook. That's 18% growth year over year, and before the metaverse growth really takes off. On a comparison with publicly traded stocks in the theme, including Unity Software, Roblox, and GameMakers, we see an average enterprise to sales valuation of 7.5 times, versus just 5.3 times for Epic Games. Now that's still in growth stock territory for a valuation, but down 30% from the company's most recent funding round on that market crash this year. So you've got strong growth ahead, an attractive valuation against its peers, and one of the best ways to invest in that metaverse theme. Epic Games is becoming the center of the Web 3.0 revolution and the metaverse industry, and Disraptor is offering an exclusive chance to invest. It's why I'm investing in this deal, open only until December 18th on the app, a deal valuing Epic Games at $28.2 billion and offering an equity stake for $830 each. It's only open to accredited investors, but this is a great way to get in on a company before the metaverse growth and a public IPO. Check out the Epic Games opportunity on Disraptor with the link below. Own a piece of Web 3.0 and a deal open until December 18th. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.